Hi, and welcome to Intensive Driving Courses NI. We're going to take another route, and today's route is going to be a drive out towards Cumber uh, from Ards, where we're going to be Cumber through a back road towards the Ards Dundonald carriageway, and then back down into the town, etc. So, as normal, we'll just go on what we see, just going to do a few hints and tips, a bit of a commentary. Um, just to promote safe and efficient driving. Remember, any driving that you plan, routes can deviate because um, collisions can happen, roadworks can happen. So it's always about live television. It's always about working with what you see. So let's get started. So we're going to do a normal move off. So I'm just doing a full rainbow check from left to right, getting through those windows. Indicate if necessary or safe. And a last check, when you're moving off, always shin on the right shoulder if you're moving away from the left hand curb. Over the ramp here, it's not too high, so about 15 miles an hour in second. Out on to Jubilee Road. And if you've watched any of the routes before, uh, you'll probably well know, but if not, this is an industrial type area. And um, always look out for lorries, learner drivers, and people sort of stopping very, very abruptly for types of businesses that don't generally use that often. The road's not marked, so, you know, try and sort of visualize where the middle would be. Try and keep roughly about a meter from the curb or any parked vehicle or obstacle. Traveling down now, traffic lights are going to be in view in the next sort of five seconds or so. At the lights, we're going to be turning right. So when you're turning right, it's uh, check behind and then your right hand mirror. Position early if there's lanes and look for when the indicator would be suitable. So just wait until we pass the car wash, indicator on. It is right turn only, but an indicator won't confuse. Lights are green, safe to proceed. And on this one, we're going to go straight on at the next roundabout. But you should see a yellow sign saying straight in the right hand lane. So that's why we're positioned for this here. The odd time they'll do this is put the straight in the right lane. So always check the markings accordingly. Just wait in a suitable gap now to enter on. Just one lane really here. But a normal procedure to leave. Top left. Signal on indicating the other drivers that you're coming off that road. See so a change of speed, most changes of speed happen in the round junction, so we've now got a 40, checking the mirrors, everything's moving well, and we've now entered Cumber Road A21. Conditions are good, so a two second gap, um, so I would sort of pick a fixed point, let the van pass it, so that could be a tree, a sign, a certain street line, a for sale sign, whatever it means. When they pass the point you choose, you should always be able to say only a full breaks a two second rule. It takes you two seconds to say, and if you finish the phrase no later than that point, you have two seconds. Finish before it, even better, you have probably more. Lines in the center, now we'll see starting to deviate. If you see like a split, then what looks like little hatch markings, sometimes that can protect an island or a right turn wind area as we we'll have here. Gap's quite good. I've just checked it there with the triangle and the black van. You can see national speed coming up, which is only going to be an increase of five for us, but 20 for other cars, etc. So checking the mirrors, checking for any early overtakes, and then on up to 45 if the gap in the traffic allows. It's a concrete road here, so you'll probably feel and maybe hear a different type of surface. Very, very few concrete roads about now, they're mostly tarmac. Dual carriageway ahead, so we're expecting a central reservation, uh, but we're not guaranteeing it's going to be two lanes. But a dual carriageway has to guarantee either a grass verge, a barrier, a fence, or a wall. So we're just following into the left lane, and that leaves in the right hand lane free for anyone that wants to go faster than us, obviously, because we restrict 45 or anybody that wants to set up for a right turn. So again, normal.
normal dual carriageway driving, just try to stay alert. Very, very easy to switch off because of lack of workload. Because I hear not changing gear, you're not indicating. But remember, check those mirrors frequently. Cars can come past you up to 70 miles an hour here, so it's very, very easy for the speed to creep up as you feel you have to keep up with them. Just remember, you only can work within your range or limit. Short white lines in the center indicate that overtaking them be safer. Longer lines, as we can see there, indicate that it's more hazardous. Generally, you get those approaching junctions. Roughly about another minute until a roundabout, and then we're going to be turning right down into Cumber. So the National of 70 is now coming down to 50, but obviously we're still in the 45 cap. And we're going to change lane shortly to position to turn right at the roundabout. So ideally I was wanting to do it just with the short white lines, but I've got traffic in the right hand lane already. So I'm going to check top and right, indicator on. That gives drivers now a bit of an intention what I'm doing. It's now up to them whether the hold back, <coughs> excuse me, or um, try to get past. Either is good. I can see there there's a black one just loitering, which you can't see obviously in the uh, on the video, folks. But uh, give them time to show what they want to do. Now, 30 mile an hour limit, and then a roundabout. We're going to turn right at the roundabout. So it's your normal mirrors, top, then right, indicate about six car lengths back. Second gear is your best approach gear. And if it's clear, head on. And where possible, always think like a small C to stop sort of drifting into the left. Normal mirror signal, left signal to leave if it's safe. Always remember you can loop around a roundabout if you can't exit after a right turn. Speed limit, we're going to deem as 30 because I haven't seen any change as yet. A little bit of traffic building up here, so hovering down to 20 or low 20s there, so back down to 2. Trying to keep a suitable gap there rather than bunching up all the traffic. And we're now on Newton Arch Road heading down into Cumber. So normal sort of urban features really, side roads left and right, business entrances, a few information signs as well, quite a few crossings as you can see further down there with the lights. Yellow boxes always remember, make sure you can clear it in one go in motion. Similar when you get the studs at uh, pedestrian crossings, always make sure that you keep those uncovered. Carriage there to the right, so I'm expecting maybe people let break and etc. And we're just proceeding down, depending on the speed of the traffic. If you're down through here, it could be second gear, third gear. See, it's a pedestrian crossing because we've got this sort of uh, zigzag lines coming up. Nobody's pressed the button because there's no weight or ring of LED, so it shouldn't change. <clears throat> Checking I can clear the yellow box, which I can, because I can see at least the length of an arrow. Bit of an incline, so I'm going to hand brake straight away rather than waiting for the five seconds. Sometimes it's a smaller gradient uh, can cause people to roll. Now, when you're sitting the traffic lights, try not to get too intrigued in the likes of shops, bits and pieces. Think more of roads, junctions, people parking, people walking. Traffic lights can change very, very quickly, and sometimes people panic, try to rush off, stall the vehicle, and then start to panic. I've left tires and tarmac with the vehicle in front, just in case they break down. I should have a better chance then to get round. And if I was to stall, etc., less chance of hopefully lurching into and causing a small collision. Okay, green lights, we're going to follow them, it's safe to proceed, so traffic in front starting to creep, so we're going to follow them through. Looking into the new road, can't see any change of speed signs, so we're still in the 30, and again driving accordingly. 
parked vehicle on the left, so I'm just checking top mirror, right mirror. I'm gonna go with the center, so I'll throw an indicator on, showing I'm barring a wee bit of road, check my mirrors, and obviously not indicating to come back. Now I've got parked cars coming up on the right, expecting an oncoming to be positioned. Nobody's there on this occasion. Part-time speed limit, but the lights aren't flashing. So unless there's any parked ones, we're still proceeding at 30 miles an hour as a maximum. Um, we're going to be taking the second on the right, just past the first. The second comes up with a traffic island. So normal right hand approach mirrors, appropriate timing of your signal. Bit of a waiting area here, so we can glide in. We'll get the gap with the white one there on coming. And we're going to feed now into Railway Street. Speed ramps ahead, so we're talking 1820 on the speed limit. Quite a few park ones. Um, we've got oncoming vehicles, their side's more clear than us. So we're just going to check, indicate, pull back roughly two to three car lengths. Giving yourself plenty of time and room. So I'm just going to let the red one come past. Creeping forward slowly, not edging out too much, preparing to stop again for the next couple of white ones. And where you can give it, put that door width in. Not just for doors to open, but people generally, the majority will take a meter stride out, so it just gives you that extra second if somebody did. get a wee bit more contracted here so I'm not really pushing obviously the full 30 I'm actually just hovering roughly about 20 here on coming again so MERS indicator on slip it down into one holding back and sometimes it's as long to wait as it is to try and squeeze through with somebody at the same time I'm going to take the first exit at this mini roundabout so normal approach, no on coming from the right. And we're now turning into Glen Road. And short drive here, and we're gonna take a road off to the right, just after the uh, black seat there. So we're doing a normal right hand procedure. Definitely got a gap in the oncoming, leveling up in the middle of the road, and then feeding into Londonderry Avenue. Right, just with that car is emerging to the left, that's a possible reverse round the corner. There's quite a few locations for maneuvers, so don't just pinpoint on the one, try to get a good variation. Uphill, downhill, sweeping corners, sharp corners, etc. It's not a maneuver that's used that often uh, in your sort of normal driving day, but it's like a tool in the box. You want it nice and sharp when you need it. Again, checking mirrors, just coming out and round the park ones. Maybe using reflections here in the houses sometimes, you see oncoming vehicles. And then at the end of this road, coming into view shortly, we're going to emerge to the right. So we're checking the mirrors, top and left, signal on. Slight wee bit of a turn in, but not much. So this sort of back and slightly, maybe not the full 10 to 10, maybe 5 to 11, etc. Edging out if need be. And we've now turned on to Londonderry Park. Quite a steep incline here, or decline, should I say. So again, we're just having the brakes covered. Feeding round. Sometimes if you get the brakes gently on, it does give your steering more grip. And at the end of the road, we're going to be turning to the right, back onto Londonderry Avenue. So again, just staying left, the center white line, right hand door mirror on top of the single giveaway line, edge out if need be, and then out roughly halfway if you can, try to right angle your turn. End of the road, we're going to turn to the left, Now 
entered back onto Glen Road. Now there's the mini roundabout where we had about two minutes ago. This time we're going to take the first exit left again. So exactly the same as the T-junction. Relevant mirrors, indicator timing, if safe with oncoming. Enter on. No change of speed limit as such as yet. We're on to Glen Link. But I can see now the national speed from this point onwards. But there's a junction quite close around the corner where we're going to emerge to the left. So your normal procedure coming up. Give way means it's a main busy road. So always bring it to a stop in the first gear. Scan and plan and if you fail, it's safe turn out. Remember, if you're turning on the national road, you'll need double the gap that you would normally do on a 30. So just if you need to let one or two pass to get a sense of the approach speed, that's fine. Now, good driving section here, so I'm just building up through the speed and the gears. Now doing 45, depending on the vehicle you're in, could be fourth, could be fifth, or your automatic would be obviously working that out for you. See there's double bends there on the uh, warning triangle. So I'm trying not to sort of late brake while I'm doing, easing off the throttle, taking the corners wide accordingly. Obviously staying within your lane. And you should find that you'll not have to slow that much. I'm gonna stay on this road for another minute or so. Just hill, corner, hill, corner. So you'll see the white line stand along there with the uh, cuts eye after every one. So roughly about 30 or 40 seconds now before the right turn comes up. And there'll be like a protection island around a painted one that is. So we just when we get to the brow of the next hill, you should see it developing on the right. There we go. So normal hers, indicator on. Drivers sort of take a few flashes of the indicator to register. And then we're going to be gently on the brake. Sliding on into that waiting area. Trying to keep four wheels within the white light. No one coming, so we're going to be turning in. Mirror with the middle of the new road. Now, I haven't seen any change of speed, so I'm going to deem that we're still in the national. This green area you can use if need be. It's just like a shared space for drivers and cyclists. Uh, I've got a tractor quite slow in front, so I don't think there's gonna be much turn of speed just yet. Well, it might give us time just to, to point a few things out. So the road surface is not great. So you'll get potholes uh, on either side of the road. So remember people could be positioned in the middle as well. Although it's national, um, you don't want to be trying to hit 45, you know, maybe 30 on the bends at the very most, obviously with the tractor. We're sort of held back a wee bit. But the thing with tractors is they could turn into any laneway, any driveway, and sometimes with very, very little notice. If you do get large vehicles, be prepared that they may struggle. Okay, so I'm just holding back. And that could be not just tractors, but lorries with uh, soil, gravel, stones, etc. Never, never crowd heavy vehicles. Now, I don't really have an overtaking opportunity here. See the driver was sort of looking around a couple of times. I can see one now. So we're going to take. Okay, so back to normal sort of speed operation. So probably about 30 on the corners here. Uh, you've no white line. So again, just look for any seam line. Get yourself a rough indication. And again, ease now for any hill and corner. Because a hill is just a vertical bend after all. off, sliding out slightly but not too much over the middle, just beside it. Once the view opens up then you can open up at the speed again. But you're looking
looking roughly about 40 on the straights in this, then certainly this uh, road. There's no point in trying to go for the full 45. Got a warning triangle there for horse and riders, so there's probably stables except our equestrian center somewhere. We've got a deviation sign there indicating a slightly tighter bend. We've gained white lines here, which is making things a little bit more clear, certainly for this point. Reflective posts there, so remember white or, or silver is like your headlights of cars. So that indicates obviously a bend to the left. And then if you get red, it's like tail lights, that would be a bend to the right. So, so again, we're getting this warning triangle. So again, it must be quite close to an area used for uh, horses on the road, except for maybe show jump centers. So your main issues here could be cyclists, people walking. Uh, if you do meet somebody who knows the road well, sometimes they do tend to take it a little bit quicker and a bit more in the middle, so be on the, the lookout for that. Brava Hill is just like the center of a corner, just to anticipate what's the other side. We've got a road off to the right sign there, so we're just wary that there could be people edging out for a slightly better look. So this time there's not, and see it's a stop junction, so obviously the sight lines are not great there. And I've got the old slow there, speed lower observe warning, probably just for the junction that we've passed. So travel up, this is called Bally Rainy Road, and it can be used in either direction, depending on what route you get. So again, we're easing off, got a deviation arrow there. So normally when there's been signs put down or slowing the road, you know, there's maybe been history or it's an area that people really need to be aware of. So the more signage and paint, the more restraint. Roughly about 30 seconds to go on this drive, or certainly on this uh, part of the road, sorry, not the drive. And it gets very, very tight for the last two or three bends. Just coming up on the next bend to the left. There's a couple of cottages, and generally you sometimes get parked cars a bit here. So you're roughly about one and a half car widths here of a total road. So I'm doing about 20 there. Pre-warning give way, which is uh, the main giveaway, is just round our, up the corner. Now, we're going to come up to a junction where we're going to cross the carriageway in sections and then head back down towards ours. So you'll be checking, obviously, to the uh, right for traffic. We'll be heading into that small road ahead of us. Uh, the road we're going on to is national, so people are approaching us. I'm um, doing 70 miles an hour. Can't really see it just on the video, but when you're looking right, you'll see a bit of a bend and then the straight. Once they've hit the straight, you can't go. As long as they're on the bend, you can. Heading across, gonna turn right now at the next one. So normal procedure with mirrors, etc. Stopping here, you've got um, a slip road that could come in beside us. And you can't see it on the video, but if you look to the left, you've got two sets of no entry signs. The furthest ones, you need the traffic before it. If they pass it, it's not safe to go. It's like a cutoff point. So the furthest set of no entry signs, make sure the traffic has not passed it. Now there's a set of traffic lights further up that road and they change roughly about every 30 seconds. So a gap will appear. So just have to be patient. When you enter it onto the dual carriageway, position to the left hand lane, and that lets faster traffic that's using the road come down, etc. And just building up your speed accordingly. And we're now on to Kempstones Road, and this brings us down to a uh, big roundabout down at the shopping centre. Just watch your speed on the hill. But again, if you're checking those mirrors and speeds, every six, seven seconds or so, it shouldn't really run away on you. Now I'm gonna turn right at the uh, roundabout, which is just coming into view after the, uh, at the slip surface. 
So this is going to entail a lane change over to the right. So again, check the top, check the right, indicate, recheck the right, maybe a 90 degree check out the window, gliding over quite close to the roundabout now. So I'm just going to keep the indicator on, making sure we're getting that speed down to 30, just as we reached the signer just before. Gauge and second gear, starting to scan and plan, looking to see if there's a suitable gap. going past 12 o'clock try to make the small C and avoid going into the big C. Leaving procedure so top and left left indicator on sliding over if it's safe looping around if it's not to have another go. We've now come on to Blair main road 30 miles an hour because we didn't see a change of speed and we're going to be turning first exit at the roundabout the town centre there as you can see on the board. This one here is quite high so you can get a good view early it really really helps. Scan and plan if it's safe and you feel you can enter do just that. Now turned into Scrabble Road. Park cars on either side here so we're not really going to aim for the full 30. Quick one coming up, so I'm dropping the speed there. And there's a set of traffic lights coming up where we will be turning to the right. Now, something to watch up here is you've got a bit of a division island that we painted one, and that's keeping you away from traffic coming towards you. So try not to go into that unless there was a parked car on the left. Lights are showing a green arrow, which is going that direction unhindered. The only time you wouldn't really go is if you couldn't make progress in the new road or a blue light vehicle was wanting to come through. So circular road, 30 miles an hour, but we've got traffic coming. So we're probably just going to aim sort of 20 or slightly below for the speed ramps. Again, concrete surface. Uh, this is around, uh, just beside a big grammar school. Certain times of the day could be quite a bit of activity. And you'll know the ramps are finished because if you're going over one and you can't see another one, well, you know that's the last one. So, as we can see here, that's not the case just yet. And still they come. Sometimes it's just easing off your throttle back onto it. You shouldn't really need too much braking. If you just stay in second or whatever's according to you, obviously in the automatic, that's fine. So we can see a ramp. We can't see another one after that, so we know this is the last one. That's how it works. First and last one tends to be the highest to alert people coming in. I'm going to turn right at the traffic lights, check the merge, wait until we pass the side road. Indicator on. Anticipating the May change. If not rolling up, line disappears. Handbrake if it's a slight hill in the first. So remember, pay attention to lights, check your mirrors as well for any bikes. Um, look what the junction layout is. Make sure it's safe to proceed, i.e. traffic hasn't built up in the new road, which in this occasion it hasn't. And green, remember, proceed if clear, not always just go. So I'm going to come round, because I'm turning right quite soon, I'm going to take up the right hand lane straight away. We've now entered Cumber Road A21, and that's going to let us turn right at the next lights back to Jubilee Road. So checking, indicating, gliding in. Lights have been, yep, just anticipating the change there. So I'm the front car, so I'm just heading out. I see we've got the gap, and just taking accordingly. We've now turned back into Jubilee Road. And as I said at the start of this commentary drive, industrial type area. So we're looking for those lorries, learner drivers, and lost people, the three L's. Very little, if any, markings on these roads. So just 
just expect people maybe to be a bit more liberal on their positioning. Nice controlled sweep in. Back. We've got a bit of a join line now. It's not official, but it gives you a bit more of an indication of the sort of middle part of the highway. If you ever go to pull in, make sure it's safe, convenient, make sure you check and you indicate accordingly. So we've got a ramp here, 15 miles an hour. So we'll just drop it down into second. This one here is not too bad, so roughly about um, 10, 12 on the speed. Next one's a bit higher, so we're going to go down into first gear for this one. And we're going to take one of the spaces here on the left, so I'm just keeping roughly a bit of car width out, indicating, I'm going to go for the very last black one there, say an L test. Just coming out of view now. It's going to turn in as if it's a very tight left turn or a driveway. Proceeding down in. And when you stop, it's always handbrake, neutral, engine off. And there's another uh, commentary route there, uh, folks. So remember, please like and subscribe Intensive Driving Courses NI. Tell any friends or family who may benefit from it or any future uh, learners. All the best. More videos to follow.